Hello, hello. Welcome. Black Friday. I'm grabbing something that I need. How are you all this evening? Say hello. I see Robin's watching. Jean is watching. Welcome, ladies. So glad you could join me tonight. How are you? Did anybody do any shopping today? So curious uh, if anyone got out there. I didn't do jack squat today. John came home a little early from hunting. Hi, Joanne. Welcome. Uh, and <clears throat> we had a lazy day. I took a little nap. I watched a little TV. I came up here in time to get stuff ready for tonight. Oh, we had a little steak. We ordered car side takeout from a local supper club here. And I got a prime rib big enough to feed me for like four meals. So I'm super excited about that. I actually, um, I posted a picture here last week because I ordered it um, last week too while John was up north and he said he was so jealous to see that I ordered um, out and that I could get it right to go and he could not wait to get home and enjoy that steak and prime rib with me. So um, we had such a lazy day today that that's what we decided we would have for dinner. It was delicious. I've got a belly full of prime rib. I've got my mug full of tea. And I am here stamping with you tonight. We're going to make this really pretty shadow box. It's really hard to see in this angle. But when I flip the camera around, you're going to see it um, better. <sighs> so I think that John and I are going to celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, Tomorrow, we are going to make uh, a nice Thanksgiving meal for us. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Glad you could make it. I guess I could say I did do a little bit of shopping today. I um, shopped online for some, um, some deals for some stuff that we wanted. Jean had a four hour coffee break today. Ended up being lunch with coffee. Well, that's what it sounds like. Ooh, coffee sounds yummy. I can't handle caffeine so late in the evening, but if I could, I would probably drink coffee all day. Um, although to be fair, I'm not sure that it's coffee that I like so much as creamer that I like. I love my creamer. I see Jean says she shared this video. Thank you so much for sharing. That is also a great reminder i love 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 to share creativity and help others coach their creativity and there are some fabulous prizes in it for those who share i'll be doing prizes um, a week from today to give people who watch the replay um, time to share and get some prizes so if you wouldn't mind um, sharing this video just hit that share button below share it with your friends or share it on your wall I've got some prizes in it for you. I'll be picking from some embellishments here. So that's why I was rolling all over the place when I logged on. I was getting my um, prize bucket out. For those of you who watched my um, paper pumpkin event last night, there's prizes in that for you too for sharing. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that, maybe go back and take a look. Okay, for those who don't know me, I'll do my introduction. Welcome, my name is Rose Grunewald. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up. I love to be creative, I love to make cards, and I love to help coach your creativity. Being creative is something that's very important to me. I have found a lot of balance in my life with this creative outlet. So I'm very passionate about helping others be creative as well. I am stamping with you tonight in my stamping studio, fabulous stamping studio here in New Holstein, uh, Wisconsin. And tonight we're making a home decor item. We're making a light up shadow box, super excited. 
Jean, I did see your order from Thursday. Thank you so much. I sent you a PDF tutorial for my countdown to Christmas event. If you didn't get it, let me know and I will resend it. But I sent that to you, I think yesterday morning. So um, thank you so much for sharing. I see, every, see everybody commenting that they shared. Once you share the video, if you could just um, comment that you did share it. That way I connect the comments that say shared with the number of shares that happened. And that's how I draw my prize. So Sue did some shopping today and just finished working on some Christmas cards. Sue, you are after my own heart. Um, I didn't do any card making today because I was lazy, but I'm so happy that you're making your Christmas cards. It's super fun. And Jean mentioned um, her order and you heard me tell her that I sent a PDF tutorial. So before we get into stamping, I just want to quick remind you all that my holiday countdown promo is going on. When you place a $50 or more order with me using that host code that's on the bottom there, VNYQBQJN, when you place an order of $50 or more with that host code, you will receive a free embellishment from me and a bonus free PDF tutorial for 10 holiday cards. Um, I have not decided on the embellishment yet because I want to make sure that there's gonna be enough in stock. So I will decide on December 7th as this uh, promo for, my, for me goes until December 6th. So we have that going on. And I'm so excited you're here, but I think we should get to stamping. What do you think? All right, I'm gonna turn on some more lights here in just a little bit, but before I do that, I know that it is really, really shadowy, but I wanted this a little bit darker so that I could show you. We are making this shadow box. Oh, Sarah cleaned all day so she can decorate tomorrow. Okay. I did not get my tree, but John did agree that we could go get it tomorrow. So I'm really excited for that. So I think we'll be getting our tree tomorrow. You're one step ahead of me though. I didn't do any cleaning. So that would be interesting. All right, we're gonna make this shadow box. And the cool thing about the shadow box is that, um, as you can see, it's kind of thick. So you could set it on a coffee table, an end table, or the particular one I bought also has a hanger that you could hang it on your wall. And I'm gonna show you how we make, oh, let's see. I gotta try and flip the switch here. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a beautiful winter scene. It will be absolutely stunning in the evenings when it's dark in the house. And believe it or not, this is a lot easier to put together than you think, but I will walk you through it step by step. Now, this would make a wonderful, wonderful home decor item for yourself or as a gift, a homemade gift for someone uh, really special and they would really, really appreciate this. Now, this particular one, I have not done any stamping, but I just want you to know that you definitely could do some stamping. It would be super easy for you to put a sentiment down here or up here in the um, corner. So we're gonna leave that space open and you can decide if you make it on your own. I'm gonna turn on some lights here so that you guys can see better. There we go, it's less shadowy. Um, this box is just uh, an eight by eight shadow box that I got on Amazon. Um, I'm showing you what this looks like so that if you decide to purchase this on Amazon, you can get an idea of the brand that I used. It comes with a cork board and some stick pins, but you, um, can take those stick pins out. The cork board we leave in because that is the back to this. So I'm just gonna set this over here to the side. Let me show you. When it comes, before it's decorated, this is what it looks like. And the back opens up. And then this cork board piece just pops out and this is what we use as the back, kind of as the sturdy that our scene is going to um, sit on. 
All right. And I'm just going to secure this with one of them. So here's how it looks. The other thing that I used in this project is um, these wire lights. These are small LED lights. And this came, oh, I don't know, a six pack. There were six in a package here. So um, they come in these little Ziploc bags like this. And I'll show you what these look like. I tested this to make sure it worked before we did this. Um, but when you get it, there will be a plastic tab that you just pull out to activate the battery. And then the lights turn on and off. And it looks like this just uses two round watch batteries and you would need a little miniature um, screwdriver to open that up. Uh, and you can, of course, buy whatever brand of lights you would like. Um, this looks like, ooh, I cannot tell the brand name, but I'll show you the picture of the box. I also bought these on Amazon. That way, if you are browsing Amazon, you can get an idea of the products that I used. Okay, this project has uh, no stamping at all, but it does have plenty of die cutting. So we are using, set this out of the way. We're using two die sets tonight. I'm using my In the Woods Framewoods dies, and this is from the big catalog. Jean says, what size is the shadow box? Eight by eight, yes, it is an eight by eight shadow box. Let me double check. Yep, eight by eight. And mine, by the way, came in a two pack. There was a two pack that I bought. It wasn't very expensive. I don't remember how much, but I bought it in October, so it's been a while. Yep, this is eight by eight. Um, also, I will mention the measurements that I'm giving you fit the inside of this eight by eight. But if you buy a different brand, it may be a little bit different. So I will show you how I came up with those measurements when the time comes. So I use two different um, dies, In the Woods Framelits, and then of course my favorite, Pine Woods Dies. I love these pine trees in it. Um, from the Pine Woods Die set, I used this tree and this tree. And then I also use this tree with this out, uh, this border, this outline. When you cut that out, um, it makes a fabulous pine tree. From my In the Woods framelits, I use these two, I, I call them birches because they look kind of like birch trees to me. Um, these are the two that I used. Now I already die cut all of these pieces because I didn't want you to have to sit and watch me die cut all of them. I used Whisper White Thick Cardstock. You are definitely going to want thick cardstock because you, as we put these together, we need these die pieces to be pretty sturdy. So what I've got is four of our little birches. I have three of our narrow pines from the pine woods dies, one of our um, more wide pines, and then the one that was the two piece die cut, that's what this one looks like cut out and we just have one of those. And I'm going to set these aside out of my workspace. I don't want to lose any of them or rip any of them, but I need them accessible to me. So, <clears throat> okay. Now for all of our layers, I'm also using Whisper White Thick. I want this to hold up really well and not be flimsy in the box. So, my square for this brand 8x8 shadow box is six and five eighths by six and five eighths. Do you think shimmer white? Yes, Sarah, I do think shimmer white would be sturdy enough. I used uh, just plain whisper white in here and shimmer white's definitely sturdier than that. 
I also think shimmer white would give a really good sparkle with these lights. I did not have enough, but I did think of that. The other thing is in the back square, if you had glimmer paper or um, a different, like a designer series paper you wanted to use, that would also work. But I used the whisper white in here. And as you can see, when I shake it, everything's kind of a little jiggly. So that's why I chose the thick. I think the shimmery white would also work great. That is an excellent question. Okay, now, I when I first did this, I actually cut this eight by eight. And I was like, oh, perfect, this is eight by eight. And then I made my whole thing and I went to stick it in and the whole thing stuck. Sorry, I didn't make it eight by eight. I made it the size of this, which is like seven and a half by seven and a half. And I went to stick it in the box and it didn't go anywhere because there's this lip. Most shadow boxes are gonna have a lip in here because it's, um, <laughs> it's going to be what holds your like foam mat in place. So to get the exact size you need, you're going to want to measure from the inside of this lip to the inside of this lip. Make sense? And for me, that is six and five eighths by six and five eighths. And then that piece fits in there perfect with no borders that you can see. Okay. Now, we are using, when we put this together, we're going to end up with three different sizes. These are all going to be layered, but they're all the same width. So what I've done is, is cut all these pieces all equal six and five eighths. They're not the same height, but that's okay. We will cut them to the right height after we have die cut the snowbank in these. So there are a few snowbank options. Um, for my model, I used this uh, snowbank option here that came with the In the Woods framelits. So that would work great. Um, but our Pine Woods also has a couple of snowbank options. And so for tonight's project, I'm going to use those. And I'm going to show you a little trick because as I was practicing, I noticed something that happened that I want to talk you through. I see some more people just popped on and joined. Welcome. I hope that you enjoy this project. Make sure you say hello. Tell us where you're watching from. And I'm dying to know if you went shopping at all today and got any good deals. <clears throat> okay, I'm bringing in my Big Shot. This will work just fine with your stamp and cut and emboss machine, of course, maybe even better. And what I'm gonna do is um, my finished correct width is the six and five eighths is this long side. And I'm going to come in here with my snowbank die cut. So I want to make sure I have plenty of room. So I'm layering it a little bit off of the edge of my paper. Can you see how that die is a little bit off the edge? I'm doing that so that we get a nice clean cut. I'm going to roll that through. This did not feel like it cut, so I'm going twice. I cannot wait for my new, there we go. All right. So now we've got this piece that doesn't look like it cut all the way through. No problem, because we're gonna continue the die. And when you need to keep um, cutting the addition to your die, you can um, find a little groove as you push this die around, you'll find it fits naturally, and I'm gonna push this down a little bit. It fits naturally into this groove here. So put that in there. 
and cut this. And there we have our cutout piece. Now, you also could use, and this is why I wanted to cut this one for you live and show you this. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there is an indentation right here from the edge of this die that I do not want shown in my scene. So I'm going to use the other side that has no indentation anywhere, and this is going to be our snowbank. All right. Set this aside. And now I'm going to use the more subtle snowbank. And I will come in here. Run this through. Robin says, Oh, Jean, would the curvy dies work also? Yes, the curvy dies would work great. And um, the curvy dies also have that cute little some of those circles punched out, which I think would um, add to the light poking through. So yep, the curvy dies would also work. We're just fitting that right back into the groove. It matches right in there just perfectly. Now the curvy dies, I would assume would match in there perfectly as well. Okay. So now we have this other piece that has a bit more subtle of a snowbank. And we're going to cut our last piece here. And this one, I'm going to do a little different because I want to make sure that our landscape is not exactly the same, like a mirror image on every hill. Fit it in that groove. There we go. We'll run this through. You know, a few years ago, my sister and I did some Black Friday shopping for um, to get my parents a TV on sale and it was nuts but I'll tell you what it's one of my favorite Thanksgiving night memories ever it was so much fun sitting there in Walmart with my sister hanging out um okay now this one didn't cut all the way through and that's okay because I'm going to show you I'm just going to pull this off and if that happens it's not a big deal you can just take your trimmer and follow along that curved edge and smooth it out. You never notice. <clears throat> All right. Put my dies back in here. And my tape fell off for this other die. So I'm just going to stick it in there. I don't want to lose them, so I'm going to quick put those away. All right. Okay, now we need to get out our paper trimmer because we need to do some cutting. I would really like my super hilly snow bank to be in, mm, I think I want this in front. Let me see how big this is. It's going to have to be in front. So, or maybe I, I think I might want it the second layer if that would be good. All right. So, for my tall layer, I need this to be three and a half inches tall. So I'm going to measure to where I'm lining up. Let me show you this. Where I'm lining up on my trimmer to the height that I need is the top edge. 
the curvy snowbank edge and I'm lining that up with my three and a half mark. So in the end, this ends up being three and a half inches tall by six and five eighths. Now our next one, we need two and a half inches. So I'm gonna take the top of this curve, which um, if this one was higher, I would use that one, but they both look about the same. I'm gonna cut this down to two and a half inches tall. So again, we have two and a half inches tall and then six and five eighths wide. And then for our um, more subtle snow bank, this one needs to be one and a half inches tall. So I'm actually gonna line up the other side because that's the tall part. I'm gonna line this um, hump up with one and a half inches. So you can kind of see how this is going to start to come together. If you don't like those dimensions, you definitely can change them. It's no big deal. All right, now, now it's time to place our trees. So I'm just going to, because I played around with this quite a bit, I'm going to follow the same pattern that I did with my shadow box here and just double checking to make sure that I'm free to go as high as I want to. Yep. All right. What I did was I took some mini dimensionals because I don't did I take any dimensionals? Let me look here. Yep. I wanted the trees to stand out a little bit from the layer. But to be honest with you, now that we're going, because this is a thick cardstock, I don't think I'm going to do it the same way. So I'm actually going to take my glue dots instead. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a glue dot and we're going to glue each of these trees into place. There we go. And I don't want this to stick to my layers, so let me get my silicone mat here. And then stick this other tree in here. So I kind of am rolling up the glue dot with my fingernail and then I'm putting it on the trunk of the tree. For this one, I wanted the uh, pine tree in front of these little birch branches. You really can put these trees anywhere that you want to. This was just the um, setup that I liked the best. Okay, and then we're going to take one of these birches and it's going to go in this far corner over here. Now I'm watching to make sure that the branches of my tree don't extend beyond the edge of my layer. Are y'all following along so far, able to understand everything? If you have any questions at all, let me know. It's a little bit more putsy than a card, that's for sure. OK, 
Okay, so my first layer is ready to go. And I'm just gonna set that aside. Actually, I'll leave it here for a guide. Okay, now for my, oh, you know what? I did this wrong, my bad. Sorry, our top layer only has birches. This guy goes on my second layer. <laughs> well, you'll have that. He goes on my second layer on this hill here in between the birches like this. So you can see when I put this together, he is going to be in between these birches. And then I'm going to grab our big tree here, and he's going to go at the top of this next hill. Um, you also can use your take your pick tool. Since I've been wearing uh, nail polish regularly, my nails have been getting nice and long. So they actually work pretty darn good for pulling these glue dots off. So you can see how those are kind of overlapping our trees. And those are the only two trees that I put on that second layer. How many trees did you die cut? Good one, good question. I have nine trees all together. I have four of these trees, three of these narrow pines, from the uh, pine woods dies. This one came from in the woods. <clears throat> I have one of the wider trees from the pine wood dies and then that one really intricate one from pine wood dies. So I've got two of the wide ones, three of the narrow ones, and then four of these branches. <clears throat> Okay, and now for this one, we're going to put a narrow pine here on the edge. And again, you are welcome to cut more or less trees, depending on what you put in here. And then in the middle, I put one of these branchy trees in here. And I put one of the narrow pines in front of it. Oh, out of glue dots. I have another package here. Took me a long time to use that glue dot roll up. My gosh. I guess that means I don't use glue dots enough. Um, okay. And then one of these narrow pines. And I'm going to stick this right here a little bit in front of our branches tree. And then our last little narrow pine we're going to put down here in the corner. And again, being really careful to make sure that it doesn't extend beyond the edge of our layer. Okay, so now I have all my layers ready to go. Layer one, layer two. I really want to be careful that these trees don't rip. And layer three. And we need to start putting our lights on. 
this is where it gets a little tricky. We're going to use tape for this. Um, and what I like to do is just extend this full um, wire light set so that I am dealing with the whole thing and can work with it easier. It's kind of twisted up here a little bit so that it fit into the bag. Oh, okay, so this one is like six feet long, I think, six or seven feet long. You can't see how big my arms are, but I've got the whole thing pulled out. Um, okay, the one thing I wanted to do was to um, do a border of lights all around the outside. I didn't do that on my... Um, model here and it would have been nice because these lights would have kind of shown around the box a little bit easier had I done that. Okay, you don't want to start at the actually let me think about this. I am not gonna I'm just gonna wrap these around the top border okay so i'm going to start about halfway down and i'm just gonna start taping these lights all around and then i'm securing this with tape This is just going to give a little bit of light around the border of our project. Okay, and I'm going to secure it here one time. Now you don't have to wait till this is done to make sure everything is going okay. You just turn on the light and you can see that we've got a few extra, see that? And it is shining through subtly, which is what we want it to do. Okay. Now, next, we need to take our first layer, and this is the front, and this is the back. So our next layer is gonna go on like this, and I want the lights on the back side of this layer. So we have to think a little bit about how this is gonna come together, because we have this light tail hanging here, that I need to start weaving on this layer. And I'm gonna have to put, um, adhere this to the front layer. So what I've done is set this out. We're gonna weave the lights on this layer and then we're gonna flip it over and adhere it like this. So I want to leave a little space to be able to flip it. So, there we go. I'm going to, again, take my tape and start taping this stuff up. Um, if you wanted, you probably could use glue dots for this as well. I just found tape. I knew it would be see-through, so, um, and I found this to be quite easy. OK, 
Okay. So now we're weaving this light through. And I'm working to make sure that I have lights here. in between some of these empty spaces. And we have to do this on a few of our layers. But I know that my next layer I want to come in from the other side. So I want this light to end on the opposite side that I started. So you're going to just wrap it around again. And we're bringing these lights. Here over. Way too big a piece of tape there. We're bringing these over to the side, the opposite end of where we started. All right. It's time to get ready to adhere this layer onto our main layer. So I'm going to use dimensionals. And actually sticking some of these dimensionals here too, between our lights. I want a good solid base here, so. How many of you have decorated already for Christmas? When I put this out in our living room, this is actually going to be my first Christmas decor item for the year. Okay, now we are going to adhere this layer, and this is wire lighting, so we can move it around. We're going to line it up with the edges. And... I'm going to stick it down like that. So it's popped up from the layer before it. And if we want to see how it's looking so far, we can see that we have some light now shining up above this, from behind this layer. Are you liking it so far? Uh, I made about three of these before I figured out the best way to do this. And um, as you can see, I only have one model. So two of them ended up in the trash. <laughs> and that's really hard when we make something like this. Um, I think for uh, to work so hard on it and have it not come together exactly how we were hoping and have it end up in the trash. But I made this when we were camping for our anniversary vacation. John was out cutting wood and I spent some time putting this together. So it was the perfect time to do that. All right. Well, Sarah's going to have all her Christmas decor up tomorrow. And I remember pictures from last year when Sarah decorated, and her house is beautiful at Christmas. So I'm excited. Who knows, maybe a little home decor item like this will make its way 
Now for this set, instead of weaving back and forth, um, I'm kind of accordion folding some of these lights uh, because we're getting now to the point where we've done, if I weave too much, it's going to overlap this next layer. Um, so I'm doing accordion folding for this one instead. Hope that makes sense. And you really could do that the same on the other one, but because I was doing the border for the first time, I hadn't done that before. I wasn't sure how that would turn out. And now that I see that we have plenty of lights here, I'm doing the accordion fold. I hope that makes sense. So you see how I'm kind of accordion folding that and sticking it down? We're going to get our dimensionals again. Have any of you started watching your holiday movies yet? I still am watching Harry Potter. Um, it's on, I think, I forget what channel it's on right now, but it's on like every day now for a while. Okay, and just like before, we're lining these layers up. I was watching it before and John goes, is Harry Potter done? And I'm like, Never. Harry Potter's never over. We have to watch them all. He is getting really excited for ice fishing and frankly, so am I. Um, okay, I just want to remind you that much like we did before, we want to end on the opposite side that we started accordion folding these lights. And now we're on our last layer. I'm going to push this piece down here, stick it in there. This next layer is, um, I'm going to tape this down here. It starts off pretty low, so I have to move this light a little bit lower. So I just want to um, tape that wire in place. You see how easy that was? I needed it in a different place, so I just kind of shoved it in there and taped it. Jean's watching an occasional Hallmark movie. There are some really good ones on. Well, they're all the same, the Hallmark movies. But sometimes predictable is nice, especially with everything going on this year. I think predictable can be very nice. Okay, and I'm going to use my same kind of accordion fold method here on our last layer. And I'm doing the accordion fold instead of just circling it all around because then it lays flat. It's a little easier to um, tape. I'm using a lot of tape for this card, my friends. Card project this is not a card. Although you could make a light up card, you definitely could do that. And I'm trying to, I'm being cognizant of where these lights are. I'm trying to get them near the top border of our project. Oops. 
so. Okay, there we go. All right, that's our last one. Just gonna tape it in place a little bit extra here. And just like before, I need some dimensionals. Uh, I'm leaving some room here on the end. Oops, my tree bent over a little bit there. And we're peeling the back off. And then just like our other layers, we're going to line up the edge, the bottom and side edges with our card front, with our front layer. There we go. So we've got a pretty thick sandwich here. And just to show you that it works, it works. Cute, right? Now, like I said, if you wanted to, you could put a tag on here that said season's greetings or one across the top. You definitely could do some stamping. You could do Merry Christmas. I think Silent Night would be beautiful if you had a stamp that said that. And now we have to put it all together. So I just spilled tea all over myself. <laughs> Better on me than my project. Making sure I don't have any on my hands. Okay. Um, so here's the top of our box. Here is the top of our project. We're flipping it over and we're sticking it in there. go and we are going to want to keep this wire thread out because this is how we're going to turn our project on and we're going to layer the backing in here and then we're just going to secure it closed just like any old picture frame So we have our controller outside. If you wanted to, you could definitely glue this on. Um, it would be, uh, I think you could still hang it if you glued it on. You're just gonna wanna hang um, glued on so that you could get at this switch to turn it on. So here's our big reveal. Here's how it turned out. And let's turn off these lights. Should we light it up? Are we ready? I'm so excited for this. Isn't that gorgeous? I think that is just absolutely stunning, beautiful, wonderful. I love this project. If you love it, show me some love. I want to know what you think of this project. I can't, I, I just think that this turned out so amazing. So when it's daytime and you don't need that light on, it's beautiful and it's just as beautiful in the evening when you light that up. So there you have it, you guys. That is our Black Friday project. I'm so happy that you could join me tonight. I hope that you learned a lot. If you make this project, I would love to see how yours turns out. We have some wonderful dies right now too. I'm gonna to show you another idea that I thought of that would work for this. Our home together dies would work awesome. These house silhouettes would be great. Um, particularly these ones with the heart and the star 
would work really wonderful. Jean says that this would be perfect sitting on the piano at her daughter's house. I think you are right. And I've got somewhere in my house that it's going to look just beautiful. I think next to the tree, I might uh, set it up there. So, all right. I had so much fun stamping with you this Thanksgiving week. Um, I was live so many times and really had a blast. My countdown to the holidays is continuing until the 6th. So I'm hoping to be live even more. Um, I am out of projects right now though, so I need a day in my stamp room to get uh, inspired and put some together for you. For sure I will be live Wednesday at 1130 for lunchtime live stamping. I hope you can join me for that. Um, I am going to go finish watching my Harry Potter movies now. And um, I hope that you all have a wonderful Friday evening and a great rest of your weekend and I Oops, turn this off. I will be seeing you again very soon. Thank you for joining me tonight. Bye.